All right, so we got Elvis Santana here with us today. Uh, Elvis is not just a successful agent, he's also a dear friend and uh, someone that I am greatly proud of, really, uh, working with him for the past two, two and a half years has been a pleasure. Um, I always like to see people step up to the plate and Elvis is always doing that at the highest level. So Elvis, with no further ado, welcome to and let's see what you got. So Elvis, we spoke originally when? Well, I think our first conversation happened about a little over two years ago at this point. Um, I was exploring uh, where I would hang my license. I had decided to get into real estate after leaving my old profession behind. And I wanted a place where I could comfortably be, be part-time, put my license there for when I decided to use it. You know, I wasn't really in a rush to start you know, my next chapter. I just wanted to set it up and Circle 100 seemed simple enough, um, easy enough, uh, but the benefits did come later when I decided I really did want to, needed to grow uh, into my new career. Great. And then you basically started, uh, you did an online course in Massachusetts. You got your license there. Then you got your reciprocal in Rhode Island, correct? That's correct. Okay, and then you came on board as a part-time, your full-time father, you know, a stay-at-home father, taking care of the family, the house, etc. There were a lot of different errands, um, property management and whatnot that you did. Um, but you really did part-time and uh, you started uh, mentoring with, uh, you know, inside the mentorship program. Tell us a little bit about that and then how long it took you to graduate from that. Well, like you said, you know, when 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 I first joined with Circle, uh, we were in a transition. You know, I had just come up from New York City, uh, where I had just um, about a year or so prior been laid off, and, and decided it was a good time to to, to leave. Uh, we did have more property that we were managing. You know, my, my first child was young, so um, and then coming to Massachusetts, where I did not have work lined up yet, uh, my wife was the one that did. So. Um, yeah, I was a stay-at-home, you know, father for uh, at least a year while I was also trying to explore um, how I was going to get my, my, next, uh, my next career going. So I joined up with Circle and um, started going through the motions, um, not really super motivated, you know, because I didn't feel I had the need yet um, of that career. But I started going through the motions, going through the training, the mentoring. Um, and that really did start motivating me as I started seeing what was possible. Um, and as time went on and the pandemic hit, um, it became more of a uh, necessity to use than all the stuff that I had learned. So, um, you know, so that really helped me to, to really put the gears in motion and, 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 and really see how far I could take this thing. Like it wasn't... Uh, more, it, it wasn't a casual thing anymore, you know, once the pandemic hit, like I really had to take action. So in other words, your why really changed at that time? Yes, yes. Specifically, uh, one of the reasons why I did not have a urgency to, to be a full-time agent was because we had some property, you know, back when I was working in New York, I was using my, my, my salary and stuff like to pick up rental properties. And one in particular was, was the one that, that was, um, had the cash flow to, to keep us afloat and, um, and comfortable. I mean, we, it was, it wasn't like we were making a lot of money, but we had our basic bills covered and we were comfortable. And as we've discussed, you know, comfort can hold you back, but, you know, we sold that property, um, right before the pandemic hit. And once the pandemic hit, we did not really know what to do um, with, you know, for the income. Like we, we didn't feel confident picking up more property just yet, not knowing how things were going to change, you know, in the market and just the whole world was changing. So now we had the need of increasing the income. Um, and luckily at that point, you know, I was already signed up with Circle and had already um, digested a lot of the training and the mentoring and, and kind of had a starting point you know, to really go after this thing. So how long did you take to really study and immerse yourself with all the educational, you know, side of the business? 
I could say it's probably about six months, um, six months of, uh, of, of studying the material, coaching calls and, and the one-on-one -on -one mentoring and, and things like that. And, and slowly starting to put the pieces in place, you know, for myself, establishing my, um, my brands, setting up my business cards, um, going through the motions of door knocking and starting to call around. I wasn't doing these things consistently yet, but I was dipping my toes in the activities that 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 were being described in mentoring and coaching and stuff like that. Um, so I could say about six months of taking this material in and putting bits and pieces in place um, to set the stage for what was to come. So you were kind of testing the educational material, saying that let me see what is what do I feel more comfortable doing. Right, you kind of tested things. You didn't. You never went after door knocking, as an example. You maybe you went a couple of times just to see how we felt, right? Yeah, uh, I went out several times actually. Um, I'm very uncomfortable, but uh, we did do that. Uh, we did call around. We did look after uh, call around for expireds. We did send letters. None of these things very consistently. We did not spend a lot of time doing it. Um, you know, I was putting part-time hours towards this. So when you take all of these things, including mentoring and coaching into a, you know, encapsulating into a part-time um, schedule, you know, I wasn't doing a lot of each thing, um, but I was doing a little bit of each thing and, and, and getting more familiar with, with all these activities and, and, uh, and building my comfort level around it because a lot of it was very uncomfortable for me. Right. So tell us about that. What did you feel uncomfortable? Give us some examples of activities you knew that if I'm going to do, or if I'm going to get engaged daily with these activities, I could potentially become very successful. But these are activities that are almost the exact opposite of who I am naturally, or, or your style, your personality style, which is more of an amiable analytical. You're not the driver expressive guy that goes out there, you know, life of the party, right? So tell us about that a little bit. Well, that's right. So naturally, I'm not an extroverted person. I'm not a driver, um, expressive, you know, as you just said. So it's very uncomfortable for me to pick up the phone and get hung up on or show up at someone's house and knock and interrupt whatever they're doing to, you know, to introduce myself. Like those things were, were very difficult. Um, for me to do. And I was forcing my myself through these um, activities. And I'm pretty sure that I did not sound very um, confident in, in, in what I was delivering um, whenever I would call someone, whenever I would show up at their house, because I wasn't practicing these things a lot. I was just going through the motions. But, you know, it really did introduce me to these activities. And, you know, it really does take a lot of repetition and practice for these things to you know, to develop a thicker skin and to and, and to stay goal oriented, you know, why, as you said, you know, what's the why for doing these things um, and really have that be the, 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 the motivating factor. Um, but we did do all of these activities and um, yeah, it, it was a starting point, a slow starting point, but it was a starting point. You moved from New York. You didn't know anybody in Rhode Island, Massachusetts market, and you started cold. You know? The sphere is where a lot of agents get at least 50% of their transactions a year. You came in literally cold, although your wife is from the area, but you still, for you, Elvis was a brand new resident, basically in that, in Massachusetts, and you started from scratch. And that feeling is also scary. That was the hardest part, um, actually, uh, when you put it that way. So yeah, I came from New York City. Um, I wasn't familiar with the area. So the geography of this market that I'm now working in was also alien to me. So there were a lot of questions that I would, you know, try to be very artful in my response because I did not know um, the history of a lot of these places, these areas. I did not know my way around, did not know the main streets and arteries. Um, so that made it very, very difficult to learn the market when you don't know the place. Um, and then, as you said, I, I'm not from here. I don't have a social network or any network of any sort when I arrived. And while my wife was from this area, the south coast of Massachusetts at the time, um, 
while she was from this area, you know, she'd been gone for at least a decade because um, we, we met in New York City. So her social circle was also not one of adults um, really in, in, in the area where, where she was born and raised. So we reached out to almost everyone that she knew or that she kept in touch with in the area um, say, hey, not only are we we back, um, but we're also, um, you know, available to, to help you with any real estate transactions that you may have in mind or, or reach any real estate goals uh, that you may have for yourself. Um, but a lot of it was, was, was networking. You know, I joined a couple of networking groups um, to introduce myself, uh, you know, to meet people and, and maybe leverage their um, spheres of influence and things like that. And just, just to get my name out there and meet people. Um, as often as possible, which, which again, was not the most comfortable thing for me to just be the new guy and introduce myself, but it is what had to be done. Um, and that did, that was a very good start. You know, once I started meeting people and, um, you know, attorneys and, you know, doctors and people that offered services to, you know, a wide clientele, um, you know, we could kind of feed each other, uh, feed off of each other for a, a little bit. You know, I would patronize their businesses and send referrals to their businesses sometimes um, and give that value in hopes that they would remember me and do the same, which a few of them did. Um, and once you get your first deals going, you know, that then your own personal uh, database of clients um, picks up. And, um, and if, you give, if you give great service, then the referral business is really uh, what made the rest of the story possible. So take us there. So the first year you closed, how many transactions? I believe the first year we did eight, eight transactions the first full year. The majority of agents do less than four deals a year. So that is already outside of the box. And then what happened? Well, second year, uh, this is the second year. Uh, we're going to close this year. I think we're already, we've got 21. And we've got another three that can close this side of the year, which we're working on right now. So between 21 and 24 deals um, this year. The first half of the year, I was still part-time, um, but as things snowballed and got busy, uh, being part-time was no longer an option. You know, I had too many leads coming in, referrals coming in. And um, so in order to attend all these, you know, we had to make some adjustments and, and realize like, well, we're full-time now, like we have to be. I want the listeners to understand when you say, business that comes to me because for the majority of people business doesn't come to them and i'm sure that that's not really the case you did some activities in a consistent manner you systemized many of the things that needs to happen in the background of your business and then you continuously went out there to network to meet with people to meet with clients and then also another thing that you do phenomenal in my opinion is follow up and customer service which is really what an amiable analytical personality is all about. That's what you really do best. Like for me, as an example, I'm a good follow-upper, but when I get the deal, I'm done. I'm not the customer service kind of a guy. You are, which gives you power. And that's something that I believe plugged into your momentum. But the majority of people that are going to listen and the majority of agents out there that are not, maybe they're working with a different company. Maybe they don't have a coach or they don't have this coaching you know, privilege and they're, maybe they went to some training, but they don't know really how to take what they learn and put it in action, which is really what's missing for a lot of people. What would you say to those agents that are sitting there saying, yeah, right, business is coming to him. Like there's gotta be something behind what's going on over here. So tell us what, what kind of activities are you involved in that are bringing this business to you? Well, they're right. I mean, there is something going on that, that's causing the business to come in. And that is a consistent set of activities um, that I have not you know, let go of. So even from the time where I had no business and no clientele, um, as I mentioned before, I was networking. Those same networking groups, I still belong to and uh, I still bring value to and, and keep a consistent presence there. And I've gotten several referrals from there. Um, another consistent thing that, that I do is mail campaigns. So, you know, that, that was very, very um, beneficial for me. Um, every time that I listed a property or sold a property, you know, we send out mailers to that immediate area 
Um, I keep a running list you know, to make sure that if I have anything else going on in that area, again, those same places that receive the first card will also get the second one. Um, right. And so consistent mailings have been uh, key. Uh, social media, um, that has also proven pr fruitful and, and, and realizing the type of content that people, um, that gets their attention, which for me specifically was showing people how a real estate goal could affect their life on a monthly basis. You know, sometimes people get lost on market values and what's expensive, what's cheap. But what I, I made a few videos that broke it down for people like, okay, if you buy this multifamily, for example, this would be your financial impact um, monthly. You know, if you bought the single family home um, in this price, in this area, this is what your financial cost would be compared to rent, you know, and things like that speaks to people. And, um, and I got people, re you know, seeking me out um, to learn more and to see how they could do things. And at the end of the day, everything that you do has to be done with quality. Um, we all go through 40 hours of, of classes and, and, and then we pass our tests and we get licensed, but that does not mean that we know how to run a business, which is where the coaching and the mentoring was so important. But on top of knowing what to do and how to do it it's it's the quality and that attention to detail that i think a lot of agents out there don't have and that people recognize as the value that you bring as an agent so it sounds like what you're saying is you decided to pour value into the market on social media educating people buyers in particular recording these videos with some of the knowledge and information that you collected in a manner that is not just mediocre, but high levels of information to bring to them that is valuable for them to then maybe motivate them to get engaged in real estate and go get your property and, uh, you know, and purchase something. So this is something that you utilized on social media that worked for you as well. Get, you know, you got some referrals from that as well. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. And, you know, these videos were based on true stories. So not only would people that see these videos then, you know, be interested enough to, to, to reach out, um, but also those clients were very happy to refer anyone that they know and say, hey, this is the realtor that you need to work with. Like, this is um, how this person changed my life, held my hand through um, this process. How much is the mission of Circle 100, which is giving 100% of ourselves 100% of the time, how much of that is reflected in your business? And do you think that, that, that doing that or living that mission is giving you back valuable you know, outcomes? 100% of that mission is uh, relevant to how I run my business. 100% uh, of, of, of me, 100% of the time. I mean, I, I really do try to go above and beyond. And I really do put myself in the client's shoes. Um, I started dealing with real estate personally, you know, in my early 20s, um, which was unusual for a kid in New York City to even find a way to, to do that. Um, but there was no one helping me. I, I could have done more. I could have done better. Um, I wish I would have had someone that could hold my hand through these processes and help me make strategic decisions as I was uh, embarking on this. So I try to be that person for, for the client. Um, it's definitely not clinical. Um, it, it's, it's very much an amiable, as we said, you know, my, my personality is amiable and analytical. So using those two strengths, I do bring the value to the client to make sure that they, that one, I establish a relationship you know, with them, establish that trust. And then in the analytical, making sure that their de decisions are strategically um, focused on, that they, that they make the right decisions for themselves. Um, I don't sell them on property. I don't tell them what they should be doing, um, but I do present to them the options that best align with their goals. And I make sure that they understand you know, how these decisions will impact them. And then, of course, take them through to the end of the process. And paying attention to detail is one of the gifts you have naturally as, a, as an analytical, which helps. A lot of agents that join our industry are amiable. The majority of them actually are amiable. And many of them are also analytical. So your profile 
for the majority of agents, in my experience, has been very challenging for people because most agents think that, oh, I got to be on the phone, I got to be prospecting, I got to be the driver, I got to be the expressive, I have to go out do, and they don't feel like they are this person. Therefore, they freeze. You, on the other end, you, I mean, I've been coaching you now for two, two years. Tell us how important it is as an amiable in my coaching sessions, you know, receiving this driver style, you know, coaching sessions, and then taking this information and breaking it down for yourself as an amiable analytical to do these kind of things in your business. Up until the moment that you become successful, how much important is attending coaching sessions, you know, unpacked for, for the listeners to understand exactly what, what you went through and how you managed to, you know, draw success from it. Because at the same time that you sat down in my coaching sessions, 10 to 15 agents did not make it. They, or they left, right? Or they just didn't participate in coaching anymore, which would cause them to fail and then obviously leave or, or get get out of the game? Well, um, to answer one of the questions, how important is it to be consistent on these coaching calls? Uh, I think it's extremely important. Uh, the material is not complex, but it does challenge you um, to be consistent in those activities. And it does, for me personally, it, it highlighted the need for versatility. So yes, I am amiable analytical according to the DISC profile, um, but you know, I still have to be wear the hat of a driver um, when things need to get done in a timely manner. Um, I am very organized by nature, so I work good with deadlines, but if some, but a lot of times as the agent, you know, you are um, involved in so many pieces of the process and you have the ear of so many others involved in the process that sometimes it takes your initiative to make sure things get done within a timely manner. And you can't be you know, shy about that because it is your own interests at the end that you are um, you know, fighting for. So, and, and to be expressive, like sometimes you do have to be direct. You do have to be you know, plain in your speak and communicating what you want, what you're looking for, um, or the value that you're bringing. Sometimes you just can't beat around the bush. And, and, and it also serves, um, understanding these different profiles in particular it also serves to understand people and how to engage you know with them which also falls into the umbrella of, of, of versatility so i think that um being confronted with with your driver expressive style is naturally uncomfortable for someone that is not a driver and or expressive i mean unfortunately it, it's to their detriment um because there is value here in these proven techniques, these proven activities, um, and the account and, and with the accountability that the coaching calls bring, because otherwise you can learn these things, but if you don't put them into consistent action, then they really have no value, um, you know, to you and your business. So consistency is key and uh, definitely attending all this stuff, no matter how simple the material is, being confronted by um, a difference in, in, in psychological profile, if that's the right way to, to word it, is, is, can also cause you to, to have the versatility that you need in order to wear all those hats and, and deploy them as needed to get deals done. Do you think that attending all the coaching sessions in a consistent manner is something that helped you to be where you are right now? Yes, yes, because... You know, in two years time, even even in just one year, um, you'll come across the same topics more than once. Um, so it does serve as a refresher um, and it does serve as a way of of um, of accountability, um, because, you know, all these things that you put in place when you start going to the top of the list again to see all these things you're supposed to put in place, you'll find opportunity of something that you know about already that you did not put in place appropriately. So it is a little bit of repetition, um, but I think it also brings the accountability that is necessary in order to drive consistency because without consistency, you're not building a business. Did you experience any self-development um, work that you did in the last two years because of your participation in some of those sessions? Or do you feel that it was strictly business techniques, skills, skill development, and more of that? 
Because for example, other agents that I know that, and I'm coaching, like some of them experience, if they stick to the game, of course, they, they experience you know, a, a huge leaps in their business. But many of them don't have those huge leaps in the business. Like they'll go from 15 deals to 25, but they completely changed you know, who they are in the process. Right. So do you feel that you had to do some of that work or do you feel that you were already kind of prepared to receive what the company was giving you? Well, one of the nice surprises of the culture here of the company and the culture was that they were complementary or, or, or they were similar to some personal habits that I was already developing. That was maybe not so consistent of, but I did have, for example, an early morning routine, which I found to be something very beneficial for me mentally, you know, personally. Um, and to find that as, as part of the curriculum um, to talk about these things, to, to encourage these types of habits um, made a lot of sense to me because you know I was not always consistent with it, but this gave me another reason to be consistent um, with those types of things. So on the personal development front, um, that additional purpose to start early, you know, at 5 a.m., to get yourself out of the way, to take care of yourself first so that you can take care of others next, you know, it, these things were, these things spoke to me, you know, they made a lot of sense to me and it gave me more reason to be consistent with them. Um, as far as business skills, where I was forced to to be organized and to be on top of things and to bring a certain quality behind the work that I produce and present. Um, so that I found a lot of opportunity to bring that into real estate and, and coaching showed me how I could marry the two, um, how the skills of my old life had value in this new endeavor. Um, and that combined with the consistency of personal development was also, it's synergy, you know, it all just works together to make you be a better agent um, and find more ways to become an even better agent uh, to continue growing your business. So I truly believe that what you mentioned at the beginning, um, at the beginning of your career was the shift also with COVID. And then you started thinking, wait a second, what's going to happen if, what if, when you start thinking, what if, when you start thinking, what if you come across your why? And those questions are, the, the questions you're asking yourself are extremely important, okay? And naturally, you, when you're talking about connecting the corporate world with the coaching here in real estate, and then moving into this new environment, learning, you did a lot of learning in the last two years, you could not become successful otherwise. Um, so watching you, you know, going through this journey, uh, it's been a pleasure, I'm proud you know, obviously of your success and your commitment. And obviously you're just started. This is really nothing. Uh, you could easily achieve a hundred plus transactions a year. You could have a team. You can, I mean, you can do, there's so many different directions. Um, and you kind of made some choices about who you are right now in the business and what you're focused on. Uh, the referrals, obviously, that are coming in uh, from obviously hard work you did and giving value and pouring value into the market and giving 100% of yourself is creating referral business for you, uh, which now is more substantial. How many of the deals you did in the last 12 months came in from referrals, like percentage wise, approximate? Say <clears throat> almost half, I'd say 30, 40% um, were referrals. From which is very healthy. Right. If you're asking agents that have been in the business for many years, you know, doing 50, 60, 100 plus deals a year, 50% of their deals will come from at least 50 center of influence and past clients. The thing is, you, you didn't have any sphere of influence. No, not, not really. Right. No. So you started from scratch and then you met some people. What do you do to, because if I ask you right now, do you have a database and a sphere of influence? The answer is yes. Right. And yeah. are you feeding the database? The answer is yes. And, you know, yes. is, is it existing database in a CRM? The answer is yes. So these are things that you took, um, obviously, from your training and you put it in action and you started trying them out and you got some results and then you put some more energy into that. So tell us about that a little bit. 
Well, yeah, we do have a CRM that we use um, to keep track of our leads. Um, Follow-up is the most important thing that can happen for these non-referral type leads and even some of the ones that do get referred because once you study a lead's um, timing or once you understand their timing, sometimes they're not ready. You know, sometimes it'll take them six months to, to be ready for whatever their personal circumstance may be. So it's up to you to keep track of that, to stay organized and to follow up accordingly and to, to stay in their mind share, you know, in that time so that when they are ready, you know, it's not so easy for them to just end up going with someone else. Uh, you want to stay present. So keeping them in a database, keeping their particular information organized, you know, in their profile of sorts and following up, you know, in a timely and an appropriate you know, matter um, is, is also very, very important. Um, as the business grew, I had to systemize that uh, system, you know, automate that a little bit more. Um, there is software out there that you can automatically reach out to people on their birthdays or their closing anniversaries or holidays and, and, and things like that. Um, and, and just generally start conversation so that, you know, when and if they do reply, you know, you pick up there without having to remember to take the initiative. So that is one thing that, that in the last six months in particular have been very, very helpful. Um, we do have a long list of leads to follow up with that seem to be ready for 2022, um, which will help us, you know, keep growing even more. I mean, if we've got 21 to 24 deals this year, we'll easily be way beyond that next year. We've already got a bunch that, that all we have to do is follow up until they're ready and, and we'll close them next year as well. It brings us to the next question. What's your goal for 2022? Goal for 2022 is to double. Um, you know, if we just take the amount of uh, closings that we've done already this year, which is 21, you know, I want to get to at least 40 uh, for, for 2022. Um, yeah, that's the goal. And do you know how to get there? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. What do you do best from all the things that need to be done in your business? And there's a lot of different things we need to do from A to Z. What, what do you do best? Staying organized. Um, that to me, if I was not organized the way my brain works, you know, I'd be scattered all over the place and I would miss a lot of opportunity. So I think that's definitely one of my, my strengths. Um, but what that really allows me to do is to not lose track of leads and to appropriately put them in the categories that would allow me to get to them um, and not miss them. Um, and I, I wouldn't be able to do that without being organized. Would you say that that's something that you brought with you from before, or it's yeah. something that you developed in the last two years? It's definitely something that I brought with me from before. Um, you know, I, I live on a calendar and on a, you know, to-do list. My to-do list is not, is not scribbles on a paper. It's, it's almost like project management software, um, but it allows the, the way my brain works, like it, it allows it to, to, to have a lot of information in a very accessible, referenceable way. Um, so that is definitely a skill that I brought um, from my previous life that has been just super valuable um, in real estate. Did you bring anything else from previous that helps you in real estate right now? Dealing with people and different personality types, um, the understanding that no matter how independent you are, you still have someone that you're reporting to. Um, you know, in real estate, our, our clients are kind of like, our bosses, you know, in a very friendly manner, but you're still de delivering to their expectations. Um, so that's something always, you know, key to remember um, for me. And like I said, just dealing with different personality types, you know, um, regardless of what you are, driver, analytical, amiable, whatever, you're going to run into the whole rainbow of personality types out there. And, and that goes back to what we were talking about with versatility. You have to be able to adjust and to, to deal with different types of personality types. Um, so that's another thing that, that's that been very, very helpful um, overall in real estate and also with, with staying with the training at, at Circle, particularly for me, since I'm the opposite of the coach, <laughs> which is Ron Biederman, um, you know, being a driver expressive, you know, opposite end of the table is me being amicable, analytical, um, 
but yeah, having the ability to be versatile and to deal with different personality types is huge. If you can tell right now a brand new agent who is contemplating maybe joining the industry or an agent who is contemplating joining Circle or someone who already joined Circle, but they're not experiencing success yet, give them a little bit of guidance. Like what should they pay attention to? What's important right now for these people? I think the most important thing that I find myself telling new prospective agents in particular is, is to have the right expectations on what it's really going to take to get their business off the ground. Um, they need to have maybe a six month plan. They need to have some, some savings. They need to have um, some flexibility. Like they need to understand that they're not going to make money they want. That you're going to have to put a lot of work in first um, before you see a dime. Um, and that you have to be consistent and to not lose faith in the process. Um, that, that's what I find myself telling most newer agents, uh, most people considering to, to join the industry. And for current agents, people that are new, just stick with it. Just don't give up. I mean, it happens. It, it, it really does happen for you if you stay with the process, stay consistent, um, and really pay attention to the material that's in these, the, the, this coaching program because it's tried and true, you know, tested and, and, and material that is proven um, to make successful agents. From your experience, what are the three things you've been consistent with that gave, brought you to the finish line? I'd say it's always looking to learn new things. Um, for example, one adjustment that I made is in the beginning when I was driving around, I wasn't listening to music. I was listening to some type of podcast, some type of uh, you know real estate educational content of sorts. So to stay learning is definitely one. Um, keep notes and review notes. I mean, maybe that's particular to me, but I find that to be very, very helpful as well. I would set up a schedule where I could, you know, weekly have the same type of activity. Otherwise I'd forget to do them, honestly, you know, the way that I am. So, um, you know, those types of habit changes and, and any type of um, weekly schedule, you know, for yourself to keep you on track, to keep you I'm going with a plan and, um, and always to take, you know, action. Like it, you can learn all this stuff weekly digest this material, but if you don't use it somehow, if you don't implement it, take some form of action, then it really is worth nothing. So I think it would be those three things. When you say take action, just to refer, I want to be a little bit more specific. You, when you, at the beginning, you mentioned that you went out, although you didn't feel comfortable. You still went out and you met with people, if it's networking, if it's meeting with an attorney or an accountant or someone that has a local business, and then you went out of your way to help these people. Like, that's for me, when I'm listening to, you know, to your, to this session, I would go back to that and say, wait a second, Elvis was actually going out there and he was meeting, he, he put himself face to face with people and conversing and building, you know, relationships. So when you say take action, a lot of people are like, kind of cliche, take, take action, yeah, like I'm, I need to take more actions, but putting it more in like, here is what I did that I believe new agents should also do. Because something is missing. If they're not kicking in gear, something is missing. They can sit there training, maybe calling one person a week or sending, you know, 10 emails to some of the people they know or trying to post some stuff on social media is never going to bring them to the finish line. Well, for me, for example, networking, uh, if we can unpack that a little bit, you know, if I meet somebody new, somebody influential, somebody that I know that I can establish a good rapport with, have good conversation with, you know, I meet them one day at an event, invite them out for coffee, you know, show up at their business, you know, uh, like really become a presence in their, in, in their, in their minds. Um, just make sure that you are not easily forgotten. Um, so that's one way that I've, you know, taken action. And, um, and another way is, you know, just calling them, texting them, saying hello, reminding them who you are. Um, and you're not necessarily saying, hey, remember, you know, if you know anyone that needs to buy or sell a home, no, no, just, just establishing a natural relationship, um, I think has, has more benefit than reminding them what you're about. So, 
Um, so that's been the one consistent action that I've taken necessary for my personal circumstances of not being from around here and not having, you know, a network. We teach a lot of different things. Like we, we go to the driver expressive, we go to the amiable analyticals, we, we teach all across the board between, for example, database management and farming is more of an analytical amiable approach, not the door knocking of the farming that goes to the driver. So there is enough things, and this is what I believe also helped in anyone's success. You know, you, you listen to podcasts, you participate in coaching, you made notes. And during all this process, you were like, okay, I think I can do that. And I'd like to do this one. Let me try that one as well. And you, when you say take action, you didn't just write notes, you went out and you took action. Like you went to a networking event with business cards and, and then you followed up building a relationship. So you took action. Everybody can come into our business with prior experience from something else they did before. And they could probably plug some of that into the business, which is, I believe, what everybody does. But there is all, already a system in place. There is a, literally, there is a, such an easy system that can fit an amiable, it can fit an analytical, it can fit an expressive, and it can fit a, a, a driver. And someone who, is, who has no D, if they do the DIS test and they come in, the D is very, like there's no D, they find it very difficult and there is no I. Like high CIS, which is an amiable analytical, they get paralyzed. Well, one consistent action that um, comes natural to me being an analytical, but that everyone, every agent needs to um, also maintain is a healthy knowledge of the market, uh, really understanding you know, what's going on nationally and, and how that translates locally as a knowledge broker, like being the person that has that information that stays on top of these trends and changes. And like, especially in these crazy times, people don't understand what's going on and why it's happening and how it's all connected. So I've found it to be very valuable as I establish these natural relationships to, with people. When they want to engage in conversation with you, they just say, hey, so how's the market doing? And to be able to, to take them on that, you know, take on that conversation and, and, and give them some light, cause them to understand um, what it is that's causing what they're seeing in the marketplace. Um, it, it cements your position in their mind of, you know, if I've got any real estate related question, I'm going to ask this guy. Or if they come across real estate topics elsewhere with anyone else, they'll know who they should talk to that could explain to them what's going on, what they should do in the situation, what strategies should, should they deploy to reach their goals, et cetera, et cetera. So knowing your market, what changes are happening and why at all times is one consistent action that every agent should take. I hope you guys are happy with all the stuff that Ellis is giving you over here. All rumors have some grain of truth. Ron mm -hmm. Biederman is a tough coach. He'll beat you up a little, but you can't have growth uh, without discomfort. I mean, going back to my original story, my, when, the, when the pandemic hit, my comfort was disrupted. Um, and that's really what, what, what spurred me into, into really going after this thing. So if you are going, if you're looking to get to a successful real estate, you know, business, creating one, um, you're going to have to learn, you're going to have to face some discomfort, you're going to have to make a lot of adjustments. And what do you expect? Somebody's got to challenge you, you know, if they're going to be nice about it all the time, and not holding you accountable, then you're not really going to do what you what you have to do. So looking at it that way, it's a lot easier to, to tolerate getting beat up a little. Um, I think it's, it's, it's necessary. Uh, we have to face our, we have to get uncomfortable in order to grow. All right, buddy. Very good stuff. Guys, I hope you're going to take advantage of that information and uh, we'll see you in the next video.